Hi, welcome to Learn and Flutter. And today I decided to take a break from what we've been doing, which is sort of learning like individual widgets and that sort of thing and try to do an application. And the motivation for this or the reason for doing this is that I was talking to my son and I was trying to inspire him. And what I wanted to do was say, hey, when you want to do something, you can start off really small. If you want to build a house, you can't just say, I want to build a house and that's it. You have to start off and show that you can maybe build a shack. And then before that, maybe just show that you can nail two pieces of board together. And so I was giving them an example that, look, I'm learning Flutter. And there are these little things that you can do. You can build a complicated application, but before you can do that, you have to do all these little, little things. And with the little things, you can put them together to do something else. To demonstrate this to him, I decided to create a Flutter application. And I showed him, like, look, I can say create an application, and then it comes up, and then I can put like a little box on the screen, and then I can change the color of the box, and I could put several boxes on the screen, and then maybe we could make those box interactive you know, by clicking on them. And so eventually what I sort of end up having is something that looked like a xylophone. And so I thought, why not just make a xylophone application? It's not going to be very fancy. Um, again, I'm trying to do like what I taught my son, what I was trying to teach my son, which is when you set out to do something, if you tr have a grand scheme and you try to do too much, you're probably going to lose interest along the way, especially if you're not a kind of person that likes struggling through things. And so you're probably going to give up. So it's best to have a nice scope of something simple you want to do. And then you can keep in mind that later you want to make it great, but you're going to work on it slowly and it's going to take time. And so you want to have what they call in the industry sometime an MVP, minimum viable product. So let's create a xylophone. And today in keeping the scope simple, we're not going to try and make anything that's going to actually play any music. Eventually, that's what it's going to do. We're not going to try and make it look fancy like a real xylophone. All we're going to try and do is do the minimum thing, which is show that uh, we can put some boxes on the screen with different sizes. And if you click them, you can interact with them. And so that will allow us to then say later on, how do we size our keys? How do we um, make shape them? And what songs do we play and all that stuff? There are many other things that we have to sort out. What should they look like when you interact with them? But we're not going to try and do all that today. Okay. So to get started, I decided to create a simple application. And so, so let's create a project six or uh, let's see what we have here. So we have part up to part five. So still we'll do, we're still doing Flutter basics. It's just that now we're saying, We've learned enough. Let's see if we can make an application with it. Okay. And so we'll continue. So let's now um, say that oh, we're going to create an app and we're going to call it Xylophone. And we're still in Flutter doing basic stuff. So I would say let's call it create a directory called part six because we want to keep track of stuff and Xylophone. Z Y L O P H O N E of Xylophone. And then we can go into that directory. Okay, so this directory is empty and I can show you that there's nothing in there. And now we can do flutter, create, and then that. Now, while that's doing that, I'll drag onto the screen the simulator that I already have up and running. So there it is. So now it says it's finished. And so well, it says that it's finished, but it's not quite finished. Okay, and so let's start our Visual Studio code in this directory. And we'll move this over just a little bit. I don't think we really need to go back to the command line, but we'll see. And so I'll close all of this stuff. And we know that all the place we want to be is here. So for us, what we want to do is get rid of anything else that um, get rid of the complication. And we can do that by erasing all of this below here. Do that. And then within here, we don't want to return a material app. Instead, rather, what we want to do is we're going to get rid of all this good stuff in here. And we can simply return a container. So uh, if I can get this, 
a container, which is what we have been learning about recently. And so I'll get rid of this. So we have this simple stateless wizard that simply return a container. Now we can get our debugger going so we can see our progress as we go along. And so I'll let that run um, there. Okay. And so while that's happening, now let's think about what is it that we want to do. We set it out. We're putting up boxes on the screen. And so let's just do a box so we can do color. Or we can say colors that let's do blue, for example. So we can put up a blue box on the screen. And we want it to be a certain width. We don't want it to take over the entire screen because it's several boxes. So maybe we want to do width and maybe, huh, I don't know. Let's try maybe 60 and then we'll try height of something. Let's try height of, I don't know, 200 probably. Okay. And then we save this and is this is still going. All right. Now, one of the other things that we know we're going to need is several containers and each of them will have their own color. So why don't we just do something like this? Why don't we say final, you know, key colors, for example. So these are the colors of our keys. Colors is equals to a list that's parameterized on color. Okay, so I have a list of colors. Now, I don't know what's happening. This is taking a long time to build, but okay if that's what it needs to do i'll let it keep building but so far i haven't done anything um terribly interesting oh so this is starting on my ipad 7. okay so i also have an ipad um simulator open here so let's hmm, i guess it wants to start on that um so let's do that um but you know what I really want to start on this iPhone simulator here. So let's select that and restart it and see if it will start on the iPhone instead. So let me see. What if I do select that? It doesn't tell you which one. So that sucks. So let me choose that second one then and see what happens. So is it going to start over there? All right. So, okay, so while it's doing that, let's continue with the code. So I'll bring down this a little bit. So let's continue with the code. And so now that I have a set of colors to represent my keys, why don't I just create a number of containers then? And so if you notice here, my container is blue. But remember, when we talk about containers, they act kind of weird. They act like a size box and a whole bunch of other things. And so if you don't put them in something that constrains the con constrain their size, then they can, you know, take the full size. So one thing we can do is we can wrap this, for example, like in a center widget. And if we did that, we should see that our container should resize to um, the size that we specify. So duh, 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 still building. Um, oh, well, um, I would expect it to re finish rebuilding. But that's not exactly what we want. We want many containers, several of them. So why don't we just map over this and create a list of containers? But of course, if we're going to create a list of containers, we need to put them in what? We need to put them inside of like a row or a column. So maybe we, what we really want is our, for a xylophone, it wouldn't look good going across the screen. So we want it to be this to be rotated. So if we go to hardware and we say rotate um, left, for example, now we have our device rotated. Okay, this is good. And so we still want to do a row widget. So we want things to go across the screen like this. So let's wrap this in a row. And that's great. But we, we only have one widget. And so let's see here. Ah, what's going on? So we know that for row widget, we can do things like major access alignment, main access alignment. And let's do for now spaced around. We're going to have multiple of these things. And so oh, what is going on? Well, let's see. Ah, so it says, um, so 
let's refresh see what the error message is because we still don't see oh there it is oh, actually everything is fine so i just had to finish editing so okay so there's our box and again remember now that we have it constrained within center then now it can it resizes so we want a few of these so yep this look about decent size there so let's do that so we want a set of or a list of containers. So we can do that by saying, so children for the row is a list of widget, which is a list of these xylophone keys. We haven't written them yet, but we can certainly do a stateless widget and see that we have xylophone key as our stateless widget. And that's just gonna return a container. Right, right now, if we let this refresh, we're not gonna see anything. Now this, passes a color to our xylophone key so we can call it color so we can parameterize our um, class here and so we can say uh, we have um, final color and then let's call it color and then we can say we have xylophone key is our constructor and we're gonna do something like this this that color now let's see updated re requires da, da, da. okay um i think we just have a bug so the error message is a bit misleading and to really see what the real error is which was throwing me off is best if you refresh or rebuild the application because it was saying that our size was missing and i couldn't understand why the size was missing but if you restart the application then you see what the real problem is. And it's telling you at the top, it's saying that the follow assertion was thrown during um, perform, while performing layout essentially. And it says like this horizontal render flex with multiple chair and da 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 has null text direction. So that is the problem. We need to specify text direction for our box. And so um, let's do that in the row row needs to know which direction to lay things out so if we do text direction then we can say text direction is left to right and now if we clear this up and we look above here now you see that our um, thing is showing up correctly um bad state okay that's that's just like a race condition or something um, i think it's perfectly fine now if we refresh this it should build and it restarts without any problem. I think um, those errors could throw you off. So if you see something that doesn't seem like it makes sense, just restart. Okay, so space around. So let's do, um, I think, oh, so this has black keys and we can't see it. That's why it looked like if it's all wrong here. So what we should do is we should make our um, enclosing box um, a white box. And so to do that, why don't we just enclose our um, a container around our, um, our center here? So if we put our row inside of a container, we can do either way. We can either put a container that is white and then center the child. So let's do that because we want the entire thing to be... Um, so wrap with container and then we can see our color here is colors that white and so now if we do that now we have this white background and it centers our um our keys so okay so that's looking pretty good i think now we guessed at what size keys to use and that's not a good way of going so let me show you the problem with this. And, and this is so far, let me just review the code with you. All we did was have a slice of keys. And let's close this so we can have some space. We have a slice of keys and we create a widget called a xylophone key, which is simply a container with a specific color and size. That's what a xylophone key is. That's it, and it takes the color because no point in passing in the size, width and size, um, height. And then we loop over that and create a set of keys, which we put in a row. 
and we say how those should be aligned on a row and so it should have space around and because we didn't have any direction we had to put like a text set the text direction which we saw from the error message that said it needed a text direction and that's it and this allows us to get what we have right now okay so like i said there's a problem with this if we were to rotate our phone upright you'll see it how it's clipped because we have too many things with that size that it overflow and it would tell you that how it's overflow so we can address this by trying to determine what's the width that we have available and then um you know calculate what's the maximum width each of our key should be so that even if even though no one should really use our xylophone with their phone this way um, still it doesn't give us that clipping um, issue and additionally it comes in handy when we have a much bigger device like this iPad which we will get to next so how can we address clipping well if we go to the let's see flutter actually I can go back here and we can do widgets and we can look at layout builder and so the layout builder widgets is a widget tree that can um, depend on the parent widget size the nice thing about the layout widget builder and you can watch this video it shows you is that it provides when the build method is called it provides which is the builder the builder provides constraint that allows you to see the box constraint which allows you to see um, get information about the size that the parent is constraining you to since our layout builder can give us the constraint that it has to work in which is going to dictate how big each one of our keys should be well then we want the layout builder to be the parent of all these keys the way you can say oh i have 50 keys to lay out or 20 keys or six keys or seven keys how many keys we have here i have these number of keys to, in this size to lay out then it can calculate what the width is so we can make the layout builder then a parent of our row and then we can get from the constraint how big each or with the width or size of each key so let's do that so we want layout builder to be a parent of our row so if we go there and we say wrap with new widget we can say the widget we want to wrap with is the layout builder and the layout builder does not have a child instead what layout builder have is a builder property there it is and if you look up the builder property it just simply says it's a function that takes a build context the constraint and then it returns a widget well with the widget we want to return is this row widget anyway so we should just do this say that say return and then for our row well we want to return a row and so it's inside of that and so we do that that's it and the only thing left is for this to satisfy the parameter, which is a context and constraint. And so that's it. And so if we clean up and we rerun our code, nothing should have changed. We should have the exact same result. The only difference now is that now, because we have this constraint, that we can use this to determine how big our each column should be or each key should be and to do that instead of making our um, our keys up here what we can do is instead do something like this we can make our keys there right we need to figure out the width and so what we should do is add these properties to our xylophone. So final, um, we have width, which uh, these width is just double. Final height, which is double. Uh, 
command and so now we can say this that width this that height and so we can pass this in save that and now we pass this in above here as width w and height h now of course we haven't calculated those val those specific values yet so but our layout builder gives us this information right it we can say um you know var w is equals to 60 var h is equals to 200 which is what we were using before and if we save this notice how we get back the same thing our application hasn't changed right the only difference now is that we have the option with this constraint to figure out what is the best width and height to use so before we do that let's try and print out what this information has in it so we'll just um try and get what is the probably the widest width that we can get away with um so um basically what i want to figure out is what is our max width in a way and if i can get our max width then i can print that out so if i say var max width is equals to that that's the mass width of the area in which we need to lay out our keys, right? So let's print it out and see what it is for us. So now if we rerun, we can see the max width here is 896. And so if we do this and we rotate our device, we rotate it right, we can see, okay, so it's clipped it, but our max width was what, 414. So this is working, right? We can figure out what the max width is. But if there's the max width, we need to lay out several, we need to lay out seven or how many keys you have. So we have to divide that max width per key for the max width for the device for the max width per key. And so we need this to be divided by key colors that length. So now once we have this, we can see, and if we rotate the other way, um, where is our phone? Let's do hardware, rotate left. And so we see that our, the width now per key is 128. Now, if we were to actually use that as our maximum key width, right? This is what would happen instead because we're dividing that area by seven. So it can lay out all seven of those, but that's not what we want. We want some space between. So the, while this is our max key width, the width we actually want to use is going to be max key width. And I would say, let's start with maybe 20% of what the max key width is, right? So something like 0.2. So if we multiply the max width by 0.2, that's 20% of this value. And if we subtract it from the max width, well, that gives us 20% less. And so there's that, so that looks okay. But I think we can probably do better. So let's do 30% and see what that looks like. And so, okay. Um, so that looks sort of okay. Um, of course, there's this notch that we should probably take care of. But like I said, there's something called safe area and we're not using it. So maybe we can consider using that sometime. And maybe what we should do is um, maybe not space around, but let's see um, space between evenly, space evenly. So if we do space evenly, yep, that looks slightly better. Okay, so 30% to 40%, I would say is where you wanna try um, setting your value. So I think 40% look a little bit better they're not too far spaced out, but you know, we can also do some padding to push the size in. There's other things if you want, 
your keys to be close this size but still closer you can also do something like uh, what about if we do an extra key length so instead of just so we can use a trick like this to sort of um, push things in a little bit smaller and use 30 percent okay so we divide by a slightly higher number and you can play with these things to see what feels good to you and you know and then decide that um, this is where you want to be this is what we want your thing to look like all right so i'll leave my own like that um, i think that's okay and now the only thing left to do is to say how do we interact with these keys now remember today we're not going to try and make it so that we actually get some sound out of these we have to collect the sound and so on but we want to at least know that we have um, this on the screen oh let's test it let's rotate if this is um, indeed working we should be able to rotate and now we don't clip the region and so there we go we don't clip and so that's good um, we can do the same thing for um, the height so figure out what height which our device should be so let me stop this for this device and I'm gonna select this device now and let's select that and this seems to be maybe this is the first one let's rerun this again and so uh, we don't need the width anymore so I can get rid of that um, but now I've started our app on the iPad to sh see what it looks like now of course we can do things like also get the height um, determining if it's too low if our constraint height is too low whatever and then what our maximum height is and then use that to of course adjust the height also all right so the last and final thing is that we want to be able to interact with our keys so one of the things we can do is make each key sort of intelligent and we can do that by wrapping it in something called a gesture and so a gesture detector widget would detect when you do certain gestures that is like tapping or anything like that so for example if we were to wrap this widget and now we have a widget that we can um, detect certain things with now we don't have any um, callback added to it but if we go here and we look at some of the callbacks that we have we have on double tap and so on and so for now we're going to just use one which is on tap and as you can see all this takes is a function that doesn't return any value and it's just a no and takes no parameter so we can easily write that function like this right and so we can print out and say you know i was tapped ah, tap if i can type today and to know what was tapped or which one of our um you know our keys was tapped well for now we can just use a color now we can say color that i think to string might might work um let's see color that to string um i don't know whether that's going to sh actually show us i doubt whether it's going to actually show us the real color um but at least we have something and now let's see if this works so there is the green and the blue and we can see the different color values showing up and so now this doesn't show any interaction like i say the first thing we want to do is show that we can lay these keys out and we can size them in some way um, it looks pretty okay in terms of when we rotate the device right we can rotate our device and still have them look a certain like okay and now we can tap on this if you can build this for a little kid um, they would be I think pretty impressed especially if you make it so that uh, when we finish we can tap on it and get the songs to play which we're not there yet but at least we have a minimum viable product if you will right we can demonstrate that we can get the key taps now it's just finding some songs and figuring out how to play songs so that's what we're going to do in the next video and then later on we'll see if we actually want to spend time to making the keys look better um, i think maybe some rounded keys we can do and so we can do that we can um, style our keys and we'll see how to do it to make them a little bit rounder and then maybe we can add some animation when you hit a key 
Uh, maybe we can put some picture on the keys. But we're not going to go too far down the road. The real thing I wanted to show you is just that you, you know enough to do simple application. And with these simple concepts, you can just build up more and more complicated things. Okay, take care. See you in the next video. Bye.